Consent Management in Salesforce, a presentation by Cloud Compliance. My name is Saurabh Gupta. This presentation is not legal advice. This presentation is not Salesforce's official point of view. This presentation is my personal opinion. 109 million euros have been fined so far for insufficient legal basis, a category in GDPR under which consent management falls. This number represents 80 separate incidents, making insufficient legal basis as the largest category for number of fines. It's no secret that data privacy needs consent. GDPR has specific regulations around how a consent is collected, how it is managed and maintained, and eventually how it is expired. It also talks in detail about the granularity of consent. CCP also has specific guidelines around cons managing consent for opt-outs. <clears throat> More importantly, customer trust needs consent. For every customer-centric business, customer trust is a significant competitive advantage. And all these customer-centric businesses understand that consent is the bedrock of building customer trust. Consent, therefore, is everyone's business. As customers and consumers, we want consent to be transparent. As businesses, we want consent to be cost-effective and hopefully profitable. As technologists, we want consent to be deeply integrated with our systems and applications, as well as with business processes and automations around it. So what would effectively serve as a great consent architecture? From a customer and consumer point of view, an effective consent architecture should be easy and enable self-service. From a business perspective, an effective consent architecture utilizes existing investments and leverages all the effort that has gone into the current set of systems in a landscape. From a technologist's point of view, an effective consent architecture is future-proof and can accommodate changes as they come due to changing business requirements or evolving data privacy regulations. From an Consumer's point of view, an effective consent architecture also extends to omni-channel. So we can go and update our consents and manage them through any channel, whether it's mobile or web or SMS or social or whatever else comes in the future. From a business point of view, effective consent architecture means our marketing is tightly integrated. So all of our outreach is respectful and compliant of consumer's preferences and consents and we can ensure that we are deepening our relationship with our customers and consumers. From a technologist's point of view, a strong data architecture is the foundation for effective consent management. So let's look at some options for consent architecture. For a minute, assume that consent is a person and it needs to travel through our organization as a person. We have three choices. We can buy a standalone app which is kind of like a recreational vehicle or a camper. And our consent person just drives it around. It's great to go to trips on the mountains and in the forests, but not really much useful outside of that. Taking further our person analogy, imagine your opportunity, cases, courts, leads, contacts, and all of them are persons as well. And all of that data is traveling on your Salesforce bus. Consent, therefore, is yet another passenger on that bus. From an MDM perspective, which is our third option, consent is riding the trailer with a lot of other data. This option of MDM typically entails uh, creating a consent master and a front end for self-service. And it's an approach that some very large businesses tend to take. In terms of suitability for consent, the standalone apps and Salesforce really shine, primarily because Salesforce over, the, over a period of time has built very robust consent controls and it supports uh, double opt-in, it supports granularity of purpose and channel, it supports consent for leads and contacts through individual. So there is a very, very robust support for consent in Salesforce. And at this point, frankly, it's very much at par with standalone apps. However, when we look at the amount of governance and deployment effort, standalone apps are significantly more effort intensive. This is primarily because it's a new application in the enterprise landscape. 
So the effort required for data governance and process governance and user adoption and training is just net new effort. Salesforce wins this round primarily because it's already deployed. There is usually a fair bit of data governance and process governance around who sees what, deduplication, data quality, visibility, security through roles, profiles, and such. From an integration point of view, again, Salesforce wins hands down because it's already integrated for most enterprises. If you manage and maintain your consent in Salesforce, it's probably already integrated with your lead generation system. It's also integrated with your marketing technology. It's probably also integrated with your reporting, self-service, call center, sales, and such. With the standalone app, all of these integrations have to be implemented anew. From an MDM perspective, you have to do some of these because you're now creating a new consent management portal and such. As a result of all of this, the licensing and implementation cost is significantly higher for standalone apps and is dramatically lower for Salesforce. This is primarily because a number of those investments have already been made on Salesforce and we are just riding on top of it. By leveraging this strategy, Salesforce is able to do a number of things in a simpler, cheaper, and faster manner than standalone apps or building other custom solutions for consent. The bottom line is consent loves Salesforce. Salesforce is fit for purpose because it's the honeypot of consumer and customer data. Salesforce is easy to deploy because it is already deployed and all we are then doing is deploying a sliver of functionality for consent management. It's lower cost since that amount of investment has already been made. And from an integration perspective, Salesforce offers some of the best capabilities in the enterprise with a rich API interface and excellent declarative capabilities as well as business automation capabilities with workflows, process builders, lightning flows, etc. So the question on the table is, how do we do it? Stay tuned for our next video to discuss this in great detail and understand what it takes to do successful consent management with Salesforce. Thank you so much for your time.